Welcome to the Parkland Report. My name is Seamus Riley. Joining me today is Dean Geiken. He's manager of WPCD, Parkland's radio station. Welcome back to the Parkland Report. Thanks for having me. Talk to me a little bit about what WPCD is, how is it organized, what goes on there. All right, well, it's first and foremost a radio station. Uh, it is a student-staffed radio station. The students have to begin their coursework in COM 141 and then halfway through the semester after they've been practicing for a bit they get to go on the air and they're on the air for the remaining of the semester um, learning how to uh, uh, utilize all the equipment the software and with the uh, training that we've given them through their practice sessions and then in 142 which is the follow-up session uh, of coursework they are on the air from the beginning of the semester until the end of the semester and each student has to do a two-hour shift once a week and those shifts uh, can range from you know, a standard radio shift, you know, where there's, you know, the, the basic news, weather, and sports, and that type of stuff, or you could have a specialty show. Anything from uh, talking about recent movies coming out, uh, we have a punk rock show that's on, we also have uh, kind of a studio, uh, they bring in, uh, the student brings in audience members, mm -hmm. not audience members, but uh, members from the community into the studio and they talk about things that are happening in the music world in and around Champaign. How does the radio station compare to like a regular radio station out? I mean in terms of like the equipment and the resources you have available to prepare students for when they go out to work in the world? Well first and foremost it is a learning lab so we have um, I believe probably as good of equipment as any radio station in the area has. We've got uh, very updated equipment, updated software and if they were to come into, uh, leave the radio station and go into a, a radio station in the outside world, so to speak, uh, they're going to find it to be very familiar. Um, maybe even to the point where we might be using stuff that isn't used in some of the other stations around the area or even around the state. So the students have a really good ground, groundwork on equipment, software, and techniques to be successful in radio. Give me an example of, because I know like for most people, I mean back in the day, you know, you sort of had this vision of like a pile of LPs and you took an LP and you put on the turntable mm -hmm. and that was the music, but, but that's not really how it works anymore. Not I mean, anymore. There's electronic music support. Talk to me a little bit about sort of how students build a show in terms of compiling a, a sort of a musical sort of segment for okay, a show. Okay, so going back, as you said, WPCD and many radio stations used to have these piles of vinyl or CDs and such and you had to physically put them on or put them in and play them. Now we have a database and the database is made up of songs that are sent to us through promoters or through uh, our own searching and stuff like that looking for new artists mm -hmm. and such. So when a student comes in the schedule is already kind of made for them. We have a formula for playing the music that we think that the audience wants to listen to but those students can also adjust that playlist to their liking so it fits a little bit more for their format um, in terms of what they're talking about and the, the feel of their show and if they have some songs that they would like to include they can then add that into the database and then through the software system they can load it up kind of like you used to do with a CD mm -hmm. you could pick what track you want it's much similar it's very similar to that you just pick the song that you're looking for so you know students uh especially some of our younger students have a, I mean, music changes so fast, mm -hmm. I mean, contemporary music, there's a ton of like local music going on right now, people can record easier, yes. they can get on SoundCloud and they can put an LP out there without having to go through the traditional production piece. Um, in terms of the blend of music, because obviously you're trying to hit as wide an audience as you possibly mm -hmm. can for a community college radio station, sort of how, what, what, is the, what is the mixture like? Do we get a good blend of contemporary with emerging music, local music? Yeah, we have an overall alternative rock sound. And within that, we have those alternative hits from the 90s and such. So, you know, a little bit of the what we would call oldies. And I know they're not really oldies, right. but that's what we're calling them. <laughs> um, we also have what you would call the top 30, those songs that are, are getting a lot of traction across the nation and then we have what we call our recurrent and those are songs that have been around for a while or maybe they're just starting to jump up into the charts a little bit and then um, we also have some specialty programming too um, for instance we have a little bit of a flashback show mm -hmm. alternative hits from the 80s 70s and 80s and that's on Saturdays from 6 to 8 
So we, we have kind of a blend of that. But as you also said, there's a lot of stuff going on locally with you know, local artists. We have a local music uh, session too, where every Tuesday from seven to eight, we have all music that is all local. And local meaning within the Champaign-Urbana area or 50 miles in and right. around. So most of your district, right? So within yes. District 505. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, when our students are putting together these shows, I mean, it's an it's an opportunity for them to, to sort of learn a little bit about the history of music, exploring, sort of designing a show, setting it up. Absolutely. Um, so what's the range? I know you mentioned earlier there's a sort of a kind of a punk rock show, but is there an alternative country show? I mean, do we do we get to sort of... Do people get to explore as much as they want? Not so much in that way. It's more about the topics that they're talking in their segments. The music tends to be um, across the board pretty regular with their addition of songs that they want to throw into the mix. Um, but we're not doing like a bluegrass section right. or, or you know, a country or things like that. We stick to alternative rock. Okay. But that's a pretty wide range sure, sure. as it yeah. is because you can get alternative country, alternative bluegrass, alternative you name it. Right. And that can be added in. Um, but in terms of their format of what they do for their show, that runs the gamut. That We have a, uh, uh, a show that's called the Anime Corner where she's talking a little bit. Anime is huge. I don't know if you know what it is, yes, but it it's is. huge. <laughs> and so she talks about upcoming and new releases and and popular anime stuff on her show and then as i mentioned you know we've got a, a punk show where he's throwing out punk songs but we also have a lot of stuff that um sports centered you know where all the talk or not all the talk but a majority of the talk from the student is sports related and then we've got stuff that's related to entertainment you know upcoming movies and things like that so if you listen all day you're literally going to hear discussions about all kinds of different things and each student has a slightly different take on how they run their show so which is good preparation and you mentioned earlier this is a learning laboratory for mm -hmm. students so I mean in terms of like the type of radio stations that are out there I mean you get pure music stations right. but you get a lot of talk stations mm -hmm. there's a lot of sort of stations which are blending in like they've got an hour of sports or they got an hour of particular type of music exactly. so our students are being well prepared this is something that's been going on for a long time at Parkland College this is a significant year for Parkland College it's a major anniversary. Can you talk a little bit about that? We <coughs> celebrated our 40th anniversary. Officially, our 40th birthday was January 28th. Um, unfortunately, that was a Sunday. <laughs> I was at home. Um, but uh, uh, we're also celebrating um, the 40th throughout this semester. And we uh, had a uh, kind of a, uh, a reunion of sorts, February 9th. And that's... Uh, um, Alumni, former alumni, students of the of the coursework, former staff and faculty come in and, and get together and and have a reunion. It's pretty interesting to me that almost from the very inception of the college that the idea was that there would be a radio station. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it was very, very early on, 40 years. We just celebrated our 50th year, so like right. 10 years into the foundation of the college we had sort of established that we would need a radio station so what does that say about sort of like the role of, of the community college and, and in terms of understanding you know preparing students and connecting to our community well radio has to be local I think to be really successful um, and Parkland College is the community college and having a community college radio station gets those students you know kind of connected with the community what's going on we have a number of promos and the community also contacts us mm -hmm. to give us updates on what's going on so that we can be included in our programming it could be as simple as a little blurb about what's happening you know in downtown Champaign the farmers market for example uh, so that those students can talk about that and get that word out but you're right um, having a college a community college without a community college radio station doesn't it seem like something would be missing for our students who go on, I mean, you mentioned we have alumni, and I'm sure we have some students who've gone on, and this has become their professional career. Mm -hmm. For those students, and that's great, and we should talk about some of those if you want, but, but also the sort of the general sort of skills that you learn in terms of communication, preparation, uh, understanding how to put something together, uh, developing sort of good um, sort of uh, diction and, mm -hmm. and voice control and all of those things. I mean, they're good skills to have for any student. But talk a little bit about, if you, if you would, some of our alumni and where they work. And well, we've had a number of alumni who, after leaving the, uh, the coursework, 
uh, have landed very good jobs here in the community, mm -hmm. um, either as part-time or full-time. And, and as you said, being on the radio is, is great, but it also can open many doors to many other types of media. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be working in radio specific, but they can be working in any type of uh, media, be it television or podcasting and things like that. Um, there's been a number, and I could, if you hadn't put me on the spot, could have given <laughs> you all kinds of names, uh, who have managed to go on and they're finding jobs that have, the, the radio station opened the door for them, and they got their foot in the door. And now they're off doing things like marketing and, and production, video production or audio production in places like uh, Horizon Hobby mm -hmm. uh, and Channel 3 and other uh, of the media outlets here in this area. I tend to lose track of them once they lose the Champaign or they leave the Champaign-Urbana area. Sure. The, uh, just to sort of in closing, I mean, the sort of the general sort of like uh, progression or, or journey for the radio station is interesting to me. It changes as the community changes. It, it grows and changes as yes. the contemporary music scene changes. So it's a very vibrant and, and ongoing, exciting place to work. It is. And one of the great things I, I find is that when the students come in into the radio station, they tend to, whether it's the radio station or it's just their personalities, they tend to create this bond and they, they become friends. And, and uh, I think that's why uh, the reunion is... Uh, a success is because those people want to come back and meet up with the people that they had their 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 time in the radio station with and they're still connected to the community they're still connected to the college in some way shape or form because of the radio station one of the perfect sort of ways to demonstrate how we engage the community and learning. exactly Dean thanks so much for being here thank you for having me we'll be back right after this short break Perimeter Road Sound Recordings is an on-campus, student-staffed record label here at Parkland College. Um, the ultimate goal um, and, and really the, the primary idea was give students an opportunity to get some music business experience outside of what they might get in their coursework. Here at Perimeter Road, I'm not just the lead engineer or just, uh, you know, the events planner. You know, I also work with social media, I work with design, I work with the business management aspect of it, so I get a little taste of everything. I really love being with the students and interacting with them. They've got a lot of creativity and a lot of intelligence. It's fun to be part of that creative process with them. Uh, they might be looking for advice and looking for direction, but in reality, if you kind of give them a little bit of a free hand, it's amazing what they can come up with on their own. This first semester was all about getting all of the sessions in, getting all the, the, the recordings done, and working on mixing those songs into something that is professional quality. Once we finish recording that EP and release it, having that actual EP release show where we get to see all of our hard work come to life. Once I'm getting behind the scenes and seeing it, how much really goes into making a song it is incredible how much tiny little details and all these little things, which is great because the students are getting that first-hand experience and hands-on experience, learning that. Every moment that I've spent within Perma Road Sound Recordings has been extremely fulfilling and extremely exciting and just engaging in a lot of ways I couldn't even have imagined at the beginning. I see nothing but wonderful things in the future for Perimeter Road Sound Recordings and I hope to really build it up and make a name for, for ourselves here on campus and in the community and um, I see it as a very valuable um, asset to the college as we move forward in the future. Well, today we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of WPCD, so we're inviting uh, the alumni, uh, past faculty and staff to come and celebrate with us and uh, celebrate 40 years of broadcast excellence here at Parkland College on WPCD. I started here at Parkland in 1981. I retired in 2007. 
and the station went on the air 40 years ago. We are celebrating our 40th anniversary now. I got invited back to see a lot of students I probably haven't seen in 30 years. I taught the basic radio class, and to me, the best thing about that is, first of all, people seem to enjoy it a lot, and you can't blame them, because it's not math or English or something. Uh, I think what makes me happiest is so many of the students I had that went on to do something else. Now, most people who take broadcasting classes are not gonna make a career of it. It's, it's showbiz, and you've gotta have talent, and um, get the breaks, and there's no money in it until you're in a bigger city. So a lot of people took the class, had fun, enjoyed it, and then went off to something else, which is fine because with the basic radio broadcasting class, I feel like even if you're never gonna go into business, it really builds your self-confidence. With the help of uh, a student intern and Jason Hayes, the uh, audio production guy, we tweaked the format and what we did is we actually brought the radio station kind of to the forefront. We actually got mentioned in 2015 in the ratings book and we were dead last, number 33 out of 33. But then in this last ratings book that came out, we're actually number 14. So I think that we're actually being heard by a lot more people, we're resonating with the community, which is really the goal of the radio station is to, you know, be the voice of Parkland. What I really enjoy the most is working with the students. They have got such enthusiasm, creativity, and uh, just a love for, you know, trying to be the best they can when they're on the radio. Even if they never go out into radio after they get done with uh, Parkland College, I think that they've really added something to their time here. Welcome back to the Parkland Report. Joining me in this segment, two students who work at WPCD, Gail and Nathan. Welcome to the Parkland Report. Thank you. Thank you. Gail, can you tell me a little bit about how you became interested in radio? Well, I love listening to radio. I'm a big fan of public radio, and um, it, I've always listened to radio in some aspects since I was a kid, music and other types of programming. And so I decided to take the radio production class, which was he offered here to Car Parkland last semester. And I just found I really loved it. And as part of the class, you actually start a session on the air. So I was really surprised that it would be that quickly. But within a couple of weeks, you are starting to do sessions on the air. Very good. Nathan, what about you? How did you become interested well, in radio? Well, uh, it started, I, I just wanted to be in a punk band. I wanted to be famous. And then I was mm -hmm. like, well, that, maybe that won't work out. So I figured if I work with radio, I'm still working with music. I'm still doing something I like. So it. Yeah. So you get to do you get to run your own show on the radio? Tell me about the show that you run on the radio. Uh, I I am the host of Disturbing the Peace, and we play all the gnarliest punk rock you'll hear ever. <laughs> uh, I don't talk much about news. I just talk about upcoming album releases, upcoming shows, and you know, punk rock. So when you talk about punk rock, are you looking at the historical from the beginnings, or are you looking at contemporary, or are you doing a little bit of both? Uh, I, uh, I play punk rock of like all time frames. Like I'll go from Iggy and the Stooges to like Anti-Flag to you know the Ramones. But uh, yeah. How did you get interested in punk? Uh, my dad <laughs> was a punker when he was a kid, and he raised me a punker. Actually, this is his old, his old jacket. Oh, so. That's cool. Very yeah. good. Gail, tell me a little bit about uh, your interest and, and what you do and, and your activity with the radio station. Well, my show is called Common Ground. Uh, just We've actually just branded it this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. Um, it's Wednesdays from, six, from 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. And so since I'm kind of during that morning hour, I do give news and I do give uh, some public information, weather, et cetera, because you're kind of heading out towards the day. But we also include a lot of alternative rock, a lot of great uh, rock songs. I try to keep it, keep it on a positive beat. So um, that's kind of the focus of my, the show that I have. Talk to me a little bit about how you sort of think through and how you plan out your show and like, so what's already pre-planned for you and, and how do you weave in your own particular style so that you have your own personality on the air? 
Well, the great thing about the radio station, which is common across all radio stations I've, I've learned, is that the programming is primarily done in advance, but you can insert a lot of your own interest. Um, you can, of course, take requests. We mm -hmm. take requests live. So that allows people to call in to our number, which is 373-3790. Uh, that's WPCD's request line. And I will place that song on the air if it's in our programming um, list. But I also, like I said, I try to keep my focus on something that's really positive, a great way to start the morning. So I want to keep it in a upbeat um, tone. So I try to choose music that kind of matches that for the morning. Most of the music that we play is pretty cool. I mean, I love a lot of our al alternative rock programming, so it's really nice. Um, so a lot of the things that you'll hear on my show are things that are popular in alternative rock, but also you'll get some requests that may be a little bit different that you don't hear all day. So having that, <clears throat> excuse me, having that plan sort of sort of structure or scaffolding for you, that sort of makes it a little bit easier for you to sort of blend in. To sort of, so right away then you're getting involved in sort of taking control and running a whole show. Absolutely, and the great thing about <clears throat> our radio program is that we're given free reign as to how we want to program it. As Nathan said for his show, you know, he can completely change it and make it completely different than mine. So it, it's very individual. I love the music that we play in the morning, so I tend to keep some of the, most of the music there. I'm starting to add some interviews that I can catch online on YouTube from different um, rockers or old and new rockers uh, giving life advice. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the bent I'm going towards mm -hmm. um, and finding a common ground with even the famous. But it gives us a lot of flexibility in using the music that's already programmed and bringing in our own music. And I know even some of the other DJs actually bring in their own vinyl, so yeah. it's open. So on the radio, when you're sitting in the radio station and you're doing your show, I mean, do you ever feel like, is there anybody out there listening to me? <laughs> and do you get a sense then, because I know there are people listening to you, of a relationship and building that connection with your audience? Yes. Um, one thing I know, which because, because I listen, um, I always know there are other students who are listening, and, and that's just because I know that I listen sometimes. And as a radio host, you have to remember too that just because you don't always hear from those who are out there, you know they're listening because you listen. So there, there's bound to be others besides you. But when you get the requests, when you see the requests mm -hmm. online, I mean, on our, <coughs> our, 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 the way we record the sheets, the mm -hmm. requests, you kind of know people are out there. And um, when we offer special programming, um, you'll hear it sometimes among other students around the campus. So it's, and also you can always call your friends and say, listen up. Hey, <laughs> so. Are you listening? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, the other piece, well, especially in the morning show, I mean, like you're often the first person, you're, you're the first voice that people hear. I mean, and, you know, people connect. So they connect to the resonance of your voice and also the songs you're playing, right? Mm -hmm. They identify with that. So you're sort of a lot of responsibility whether people get a good start to the day or not. I think it's important. I mean, I, I like listening to the news and, and you listen to the radio in the morning. That's one of the first things I do when I get up. So I do take it as an important role in making sure that they get the information they need and they get off on their day in a positive way. So for Nathan, like, you know, for you, one of the most important things and interesting things about the radio is the diversity of sort of experience that people can have, right? So you can tune into different types of radio stations. So at WPCD, you have the opportunity to listen to one station and get a wide variety of different sounds, right? right. There's got to be a bunch of people just like you out there, a bunch of people just like your dad out there, that this music resonates with them. This isn't just you know, tunes to make you feel good, that may make you feel good, but right. there's, there's a real interest and a sense of identification. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I have, uh, down in Champagne Cycle, they have me going through their sh uh, store every time I'm on the air. So, like, they'll call in, they'll make requests, and, you know. I have, I have a specific audience, but I do have an audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But, yeah. but I mean, that's just as important as sort of like a general audience, right, <clears throat> excuse yeah. me, where everybody is sort of tuning in. So it, part of what you're doing, I imagine, is also educational because for a lot of people, this would be maybe music they hadn't heard before. Yeah, a lot of people don't <coughs> listen to punk and I mean, getting it out there, they might hear something they like and, mm -hmm. you know, go with it. Mm -hmm. so. So you talked about sort of the, because punk is something that has sort of, you know, again, began probably major time in, in 77, but has sort of certainly right. uh, achieved a lot of uh, longevity since then. What about emerging bands, emerging punk rock bands on the local scene? Do you connect with those? Uh, I, I don't know too much of the local scene around here. Uh, I play in a band, but it's not local to here. It's local to around Springfield area. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> but yeah, we uh, nobody does punk. Ver P punks aren't around. It's usually I have to play with a metal band, mm -hmm. and you know different crowds and. What about you know. contemporary movements across the country? Like, I mean, are you tapped into what's going on in terms of, of emerging bands in the punk rock scene? Uh, you know, there's not too many coming out. Uh, the, I mean, there's pop punk, but that ain't really my thing. I'm, I, I don't even get pop punk, and like popular <laughs> and punk, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just listen to like the same stuff I've been listening to like my whole life, I guess. What's it like for you having a show that you're sort of booming out these tunes that, that people are listening to that maybe you don't know and maybe you get some connection back. It, it's a good experience. I mean, I don't know. Do what people I'll connect be. with you? Do they call in? Do they yeah, make I get, requests? I've and, gotten, I think my record's four calls in one show. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Uh, people good. don't typically call in because if they request something that's not punk, then it's like, sure, you know, I ain't going to play it. It's right. my got demographic. Yeah. But uh, you're not going to play the Bangles, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what about in terms of like your education in general? Like, so how is this helping you in terms of learning skills, obviously? But how you might use some of this uh, information and some of these lessons you've learned uh, going forward? Well, I mean, it's taught me how to like uh, made my voice better, right? Because you need a good voice for the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I didn't. Never, I never even saw this software before, so it, it's like a brand new experience coming here and learning this. Were you impressed that you were able to go almost from having zero knowledge to relatively quickly being able to be on the Yeah, air? at first it was really intimidating because you like walk in there, there's that board with all the faders, you don't know what's going on, but then you realize you only have to use like two of them, <laughs> and then it gets a lot simpler. Uh, yeah, it it's not that hard to pick up on if if you're you know, I guess, good at it. Yeah. <laughs> Gail, same question for you, like in terms of like whatever your life plans are, or work, work plans are, or career plans are, talk about how this has been just a good way to learn some important skills. Well, certainly I've learned to handle the board and I've seen this board in, in other situations, even in television. So it's very, it makes me feel a lot more comfortable translating these, transferring these skills to something else. But also listening to the music and hearing what people like. As a musician who's been around a while and a big fan of alternative rock in the 80s, I see what, how it's very similar to what it was in the past and also it lets me hear what, kind of what people are listening to now um, and what, what kind of themes are going on right now. So if I want to produce some more music, then I know what the audience uh, level is for mm -hmm. different types of music out there. So. Well, it's great uh, that you're here and great that you're part of a radio station that's been around for over 40 years. So thank you so much for being here on the Parkland Report. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for Parkland Report. We'll see you back here next time.